Welcome everybody back to the channel. Today we're going to be diving in and playing some more in the name of Jerusalem 2. I'm currently going ahead and testing out a mod list uh, for my future Let's Play as the Byzantine Empire or the Romans. If you're excited for this series then be sure to drop a like and a comment down below. It really helps out and let's dive in. So there are plenty of factions to choose from, but we're going to be playing as the Romans. They get some decent bonuses to begin with. Uh, we get a nice little reduction in mercenary cost, and this is everything related to them. So this is not only hiring mercenary clans, but also the mercenaries at the taverns, which actually provide with some very good units as this mod has a completely custom recruitment system. So their mercenaries come absolutely invaluable. We also get a reduction in food and water consumption, which is nice, just reduces our overall costs of, of harboring an army. Our sieges and our castles as a culture, as an empire, uh, will be reduced, allowing us to travel much larger distances. We also get a nice little boost to our security in cities that just stops rebellions from firing. Unfortunately, though, there are some negatives. We get cor corruption, so our taxes are decreased and the soldiers' wages are increased. And we also get a reduction in the army uh, organization so we, we basically our armies break apart by a little bit faster and also it costs a little bit more to invite lords to our armies some good bonuses here and also some good negatives however i think we'll be able to utilize these uh, positives more than the negatives let's let's make ourselves a, a juicy juicy man so we don't really need to do anything too crazy we're a nice little byzantine man let's find ourselves a nice uh looking a dude there you go a nice little i mean he looks more french than anything else but that's fine uh they also added in some new banners as well which is cool <laughs> the dragon chicken i love it and here we go on the first day of summer 1187 we have joined the roman empire i bend the knee and i've been granted a castle to manage lovely so we can give him this castle uh down here actually right next to constantinople again if you guys haven't seen this mod before you can obviously take a look at it. It's pretty large scale. There is a lot of castles, a lot of settlements. It looks very cool. And yeah, there you go. They actually have added in some of the ones now as well. Very cool indeed. Uh, the map itself looks gorgeous for sure. Goes all the way obviously, obviously down into Egypt. You have all the Crusaders fighting. The details of the map is, yeah, incredible as well. Really nice stuff. Uh, you go all the way up. Obviously, you have Jerusalem itself looking great. Jerusalem. And everybody has locked into a pretty brutal wars right off the bat. Uh, so as the Byzantines, uh, as you can see, we have the largest empire. Uh, actually, yeah, we definitely do have a lot. I think we have a larger empire uh, than the Ayyubids at this point, which is, of course, always nice. But as you can see, we are at war on every front. So we're fighting basically the entirety of the Balkans, the Bulgarians to the north. Uh, we're also fighting the Serbians over to the left, uh, the Normans. And we're also fighting the Sultanate of Rum and Sicilia as well, which is like Armenia. So, yeah, we're at war with a lot of people. And, you know, that, that means that we're going to be attacking. And again, think how long it's going to take to travel from one side of the empire all the way to the other to defend. And there's a lot of impassable terrain. You can see the Turkish mountains are fierce. They give us great defenses, but they also provide us with a very, very brutal setup. Also, this map, this uh, castle looks amazing as well. Oh. Holy crap, that's like a double walled castle. That looks great. So yeah, a lot of people. But I think we do I think we do have the largest army. Yeah, we have the largest standing army at the beginning of the game. 27 towns, 54 castles. Yeah, we're very strong. The Crusaders are severely outmatched as well. But we're of course, you know, at war with so many people. They're small, but you know, the sort of rum is scary in Bulgaria amasses some soldiers quite quickly as well. Okay, so now that we've done our unit upgrades, now let's recruit some soldiers. So the recruitment in this mod is very different than it is in vanilla. You have lance recruitment. So basically, you recruit an entire lance of soldiers. So I'd recruit these soldiers. And as you can see, you get multiple of them. So there's currently two of these guys, one horse, four of these guys, six of these, and one of them. And that's a lance recruitment. If I was to recruit, and you can also see they're, they're completely free because these soldiers are tied to the land and by virtue they're tied to the lord. So I basically take these soldiers away from the farms and I bring them into my army. However, they replenish very slowly because of that. 
So you can see it, I get 49 soldiers and it basically costs me no money because by medieval law and the recruitment of the time, that's what these soldiers, you know, they were. They were tied to the land, tied to the Lord. So what we're going to do is we're probably just going to recruit the best soldiers in the, in the Lance. And as you can see, soldiers don't dramatically increase in, in skill. It's not like vanilla Banner Lord where you go from a peasant to, you know, an Imperial Legionary. You don't rise through the ranks. You just kind of get more experienced in your role. So tier, like this tier 3 infantry is always a tier 3 infantry. He basically just gets maybe a little bit better armor and better stats so he performs better. And like maybe his weapons are a tiny bit better, but nothing massively. Like he's never going to be able to become a, a legendary killer, if that makes sense in my mod. But still very good nonetheless. So we're going to pick up all the infantry. Our archers, we probably could do with some decent archers. And we get a lot of them as well. And then of course we're going to take the knights. The knights are like absolutely godlike. Another really nice thing about this mod as well is all the different variants as well. Look at how many variants there are for this tier 6 cavalry. 18. That is insane. Um, again, some are just recolors, but a lot of them are completely different looks to the, the character themselves. And again, it's the same for these guys. There's 11 of these. Like, there's a lot of different variants, which makes battles incredible. It makes battles so much fun. Even for like the low tiers, there's nine different variants. And when you think of all the different factions there are, it gets pretty crazy. So we're going to recruit all of this to begin with us 30 men. And then we might come back to it and, and change it. Because again, remember, we have some more settlements. You can also see right here, look how cool this is. Because we're taking the farmers away from the lands, the hearth, and this is basically how prosperous the village is, has been reduced. That's so cool. Again, balancing hasn't been done yet. So maybe this will be more extreme or less extreme. But that's so cool, right? Like I'm taking farmers away from the cities. And it's affecting the prosperity of the actual village itself. Which then in turn affects like, you know, how much money we're making through tax. It affects how well the, the castle's doing. If the castle can sustain with food. This is really cool. But yeah, we're going to be getting raided by the Bulgarians pretty heavily. So let's go north then. We should see the Belisarius call up some uh, legions fairly quickly. Uh, we can also find some tournaments as we got there as well. So that's no, no problem whatsoever. We can, if we as soon as we start winning battles as well, we can then look to actually uh, form our very own army. And there you go. A new, a new lord has been, has been risen. On the first day of summer, 1187, Constantine Stephiostus was obsessed by the burning passion for the throne, proclaiming Belisarius by his clan and all his armies. I'm not sure if that's, yeah, but so that's someone in rebellion against us, basically. The despot. So we've actually just had a rebellion. Oh, it was this guy. Yeah, this guy just rebelled against us. A pretty powerful lord as well. So that sucks. Losing all that territory is not good. You can already start to see the cracks appearing. Okay. Because they have no cavalry. We have a lot of archers. Look how cool as well this outfit is. It looks amazing. I love it. And the saddle as well. Looks really good. Yeah, we shouldn't have to worry really. Oh, they actually do have cavalry. Wow. Okay, let's see what they have. This is the militia of the town as well, by the way. They actually have good cavalry. And then just basic infantry. But there are actually some elite men in here. Well, I get it. It makes sense, right? Oh, okay. No, it does make a lot of sense. This is actually a good army. Because of the Lance recruitment, because the Lance recruitment probably hasn't been taken from this settlement, they actually have a decent army. Like, these are all the people that you can recruit in, an, in, in the settlement, probably, plus the militia. That's kind of cool. I like that. Okay, let's make our way down then with our small amount of infantry. And our cavalry can probably set up here. And we'll, we'll make our, our left flank out a little bit lighter. We have to be kind of careful though, remember, we, as, as, we, as you guys say, like, the balance of power is not in our favor. Fighting in these, like, fields, these wine fields, is not going to be a good idea either. The archers should be in range now. We just have to hope the infantry line holds. We, need, we basically need to get their, in, their entire army in this field so our cavalry can do damage. Because without that, we're going to be in a very bad situation, I think. Just try and disrupt them a little bit. There we go. That's some good damage. 
Again, cavalry in this mod is insane. Heavy armor in this mod is also insane. Okay, there's a couple more kills on their archers. I guess they're lord there as well on horseback. Come back in. Does that encourage them? No, they're still playing defensive. We might actually have to. We might actually have to go in. Not looking forward to it, but we might. We could also think about maybe dismounting our knights and, and walking in. Okay, let's push up. Let's try and encourage them. Get up to the riverbed here. Archer's going to have to push up. Cavalry is still going to you know, be, be aggressive. Let's got our cavalry like here. And the other cavalry unit, I don't know, like here. Okay, here they come, here they come. Okay, Imshi hold, Imshi hold. Archers back, archers back. Okay, we're going to let them in. Oh, they're going to funnel down. This is going to be amazing. Let's get our cavalry ready. Cavalry ready. Let them in, let them in. Imshi hold. Infantry hold. Charge and charge. Okay, both cavalry units should now be charging in. You guys need to come a little bit quicker, please. The archers might have to get stuck in as well. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Into their infantry. Let's go. Smash through them, please. Okay, this is where we should have the advantage. The cavalry, the heavy knights. Yeah, infantry now charge. Archers now charge. We need, our archers actually got some more I mean, ammo as well. Maybe we don't charge in the archers. I feel like we just need manpower here. Careful there, we don't get hit. They're good at dismounting as well. The way the infantry deals with archers in this mod is that they dismount. Yeah, we completely smashed them now. They're running. Don't let them route. Don't let them route. Keep on hitting them. Keep on hitting them. Put the pressure on. Put the pressure on. You still have to obviously get uphill and deal with their archers. So cavalry now just charge. So they can then deal with said archers up here. It's one less we have to worry about. Wrap around now. So that was a pretty intense battle. I'm not going to lie. For just raiding a settlement. We lost eight men. Four of our archers, I think. And then, I don't know what these are. Infantry, maybe. We got a bunch of prisoners, though. And we got a ton of loot. Look at that. Nice. I mean, we, we need that right now. Okay, well, I think we got another rebellion, right? He went over the German allies and kinsmen. So what just happened? This guy rebelled against us as well. So we are deep in enemy lines. I might need to fall back, honestly. Oh my god, the Byzantines have it rough. Okay, so we have another rebellion. Uh, I think I stick around here because we're gaining a lot, of, a lot of good resources. We're gaining a lot of resources. Okay, now we have to leave. Oh my god, is there another rebellion? <laughs> so Saladin has is, is called for a jihad on Jerusalem. And Saladin is, yeah, not someone to mess around with. Uh, his army is fierce. One of the bonuses from the Ayyubid Sultanate is that they get more soldiers. They get a lot more soldiers. However, um, they're not as high quality. So they can muster more, which in Bannerlord is really all you need. Yeah, Saladin definitely about to cook the Crusaders. I, I always... Because this is obviously the, the Crusade that the Crusaders get absolutely smashed on. They don't really ever perform well until obviously Richard Lionheart turns up and kind of saves the day. Um, so yeah, and I think they are planning an event. I'm not sure if it's in this build of the mod. When the Crusaders lose Jerusalem, they actually go ahead and, uh, you know, Richard Lionheart does turn up. We could also just do a tournament here as well. I don't know if the uh, Byzantine tournaments have changed much. Let's have a look. Um, some good weapons. Can I join as a team? Oh, yeah, you go. So we can select three members. I guess I'll choose. Oh, is that, that is literally the, the, the Emperor. So we'll choose the Emperor to be on our, our team. I think that should give us a pretty fair advantage. Oh, I really love these uh, big like uh, uh, tournaments like this. I just wish you could command the soldiers you're fighting with. Like, I wish I could actually like order these men around. I mean, I say this every time. But I think it would just be very cool if you could order these soldiers around and actually have like a proper like Battle of Nations style combat, you know? But these weapons do no damage. Blunt weapons against heavy armor, man. I mean, sorry, sharp weapons against heavy armor. Piercing does okay. Oh, God. 
Oh, God. Oh, no, it did not go well. It did not go well. Okay, I can probably kill this guy. He's almost dead. It's fine. I think we still made it through, though, right? Oh, we didn't. What? Someone else got more kills than us. How? Oh, it's only one team? Oh, I guess only one team made it through. Dude. Okay, interesting. Okay, cool. Let's head back now. Uh, look for some battles. Wait and see if we can get like a good engagement. We obviously we know there's a big army up there. These armies are exhausted. So that's another really cool thing about this mod. You have a thing called party fatigue. So the more you travel without resting, you, you'll get slower. This army right now is exhausted. It's 11% fatigue. So until it rests, it's going to be going super slow, 1.6. Whereas we're going 6.5. So it means when you actually invade enemy territory, it comes a much harder... Like a much harder kind of, I guess, plan of assault. Also, we are just losing so much land right now. Oh, we took Belgrades. Though, I guess, is a is a good bonus. <laughs> oh, and we can easily jump this guy. Get him. Let's go, let's go, let's go. No. Nice. So, you know, actually, the, the AI does do a pretty decent job. I would say that the AI does a better than expected job at dealing with this new mechanic in the game that it's not designed for. It generally does keep track of its fatigue and tries to make it back into friendly territory to rest. Uh, cool, so we're going to dive in and fight this army. Reinforcements as well. Which is always nice. We also have another 200 men here uh, on, on making their way over, which is nice. Uh, cool, let's dive in. Oh, a nice battlefield. So yeah, this is one thing as well the mod is doing. is trying to create battle maps that resemble the actual campaign map itself. So again, if you're fighting in the, the desert, you're going to be fighting on a, on, a, on a similar looking desert map. You're fighting in the mountains, you're going to be fighting in similar mountains, if that makes sense. Okay, so the nice thing is our, our archer is now, uh, our, our companion archer is now in the archer unit, which is good. Okay, so they are pushing forwards us. Let's go and support. Again, I need to save my infantry as much as I can. They're going to go take the hill advantage, which is fine. And then I'm going to push up my cavalry on this right flank. So let's do it. Let's move up. So we're taking a little bit of missile fire. Luckily, they only have 20 missiles. Ideally, we want to slaughter their cavalry. That's going to be the biggest issue for us. Okay, here we go. The archers are firing in now. Ideally, we want to try and upgrade these because they do get much better bows when they upgrade. I'm going to let the AI take the brunt of the assault as well. Because unlike in vanilla Ban Lord, cavalry does more like dismantle archers in this. Because heavy armor is like impenetrable to, you know, ineffective weapons. You do like four damage to them. And again, a lot of the archers aren't designed to deal with heavy cavalry. They don't have a lot of blunt weapons. Or spears. So they do just get ripped apart by cavalry. And impact damage in this mod is, yeah, insane. It's second to none. Okay, okay, okay. We need to actually support our... All cavalry go back, please. And defend our archers. Because they're under a bit of fire right now. Block that, please. Yeah, my horse got hit hard there. Okay, there we go. There we go. There we go. Should be a battle one. They just have their cavalry left now, which is fine. So my cavalry should be enough to deal with that. Okay, so things are looking pretty dire for the Byzantines. We are cut off. So ideally, our first goal should be to try and take back these two castles here. By taking these two castles, we basically secure our path to Adrianopolis. And then we can push northwards try and connect back up with our armies to the north there are a few very good armies around here oh there's a battle going on let's go boys let's go let's go let's go let's get stuck in again can we try and drag this army in as well yeah nice okay and this is the leader of the rebellion as well yeah right here so we did when we defeat him here that's going to give a big blow to their aren't their, their fighting for okay so we're gonna of course as always let their army move up uh let's just push up our infantry here archers can be on the hill our cavalry, again, can probably just defend this pass. Uh, I think that's a good good little position. Oh, they're actually pushing towards us as well. Maybe they're trying to take the high ground. I think we get there way before them. So, oh, they're, they're coming in. Okay, charge, charge, charge. Am I running into this? Oh, I am. I'm running into this bad. Okay, arch is back, arch is back. I'm like running into the melee. Probably going to lose all my infantry here because I'm an idiot. Yeah, that's really stupid of me. 
Uh, infantry full back. Uh, archers just sit here. Let's go up now. I can maybe distract them a little bit. We need to hold the line here. Yeah, we really need to hold the line so that... Oh, I'm going to put out my sword now. So I'm basically going to try and fall back to like here. So that our archers can fire in. And then hopefully them 102 men that are on their way can then also make their way down here. Cavalry's getting stuck in as well. We're racking up a couple kills. Let's keep on falling back, boys. And then, yeah, big flank here. Come on, we need yeah, reinforcements have arrived now. But again, the archers should be peppering this line heavy. Okay, nice. Our infantry line is reformed. Okay, now our infantry can push up as the uh, the other, other flank has gone forward now. Cool. Nice, nice, nice. And then it's just dealing with everything else. Cool. Everyone else can just charge now. Get our archers up on the hill so they're protecting our infantry up here. But the cavalry can all just charge now. It's just enemy horses left. Cool, let's head our way back now to Constantinople. Get, get rid of our prisoners. This army should arrive. Yeah, here it is. So it's arriving just in time. Fully rested. Let's head north now. So ideally, we're looking for another battle or two. So we can probably get enough influence to have one more soldier join us. Yeah. Uh, this castle is a much bigger garrison. We kind of need another soldier to join us. Who's the cheapest? We get you. 14 hours away. Okay, boom. Let's do it. Let's start the siege. We're going to get reinforcements of another 158 men. So other people might join us here as well. Boom. There we go. Nice. We'll try and make a breach in the wall. Okay, yeah. And our armies are north now. So we are dominating this quite nicely. Uh, so let's... let's do, we probably want to make a breach, right? Probably want to make a breach. It's going to take us a while. Siege is in this game are quick. Maybe we don't need a breach now. But I also do not like the look of them catapults. They're going to hurt. Oh, you can't break walls in this mod. Okay, interesting. Okay, but I don't care about that. Let's get a battering ram and let's assault. Because you can't... Seemingly, you can't actually break the walls. Uh, okay, let's just do it then. Let's, let's move in. Let's just try and storm the walls quickly, I think. It's okay losing our spear. I just need my men to get on the walls quickly, I think. Get these ladders up and start climbing before they can really put up a good defense. Could also try and pick up my spear again. Don't know how successful it is. I'm seeing a lot of lightly armored soldiers here as well, which is not not what we want to be seeing, I don't think. We've got a lot of arrow cover though, which is good. Yeah, we're losing quite a lot of men. Okay, it hurts, it hurts. Let's get up here, try and draw some of their fire away, keep our shield. A lot of spears here, which is good for us. The spears are, are fierce weapons right now. Watch our back, watch our back. Ow, cello. Chill, 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 chill. Kick him. Slash him. Block there. Oh, he blocked me. God, that okay. Why you guys keep on... Okay, I'm stuck, I'm stuck. Okay, we just need to run now, I think. Try and get in this doorway. Why are they just all chasing me? Chill! Oh my god, I'm so dead. Sorry, where is my support? Oh my god. Somehow we're still alive here. They're just like straight up focusing me. That is insane. But they're just like, yeah, we, we want... You're going to die, basically. I mean, it's good that they're doing that. But also annoying for me as the player. And we need a new shield if we can. Pick up that shield. Let's hit that guy as we run pot. No, we crashed. Let me on the catapult. I wonder... Right, can I, like, start smashing down the gate with this catapult? Okay, let's try now. Okay, a little bit lower. Yeah, there you go. So you can smash it down. We just did a thousand damage to the gate. All right, let's get that gate down. Oh, it's already down. Oh, the gates are open as well. Nice. Pour through, men. Pour into the city. So this mod also takes into account where you hit the enemy with your weapon. So this sword is much more effective at, like, the tip. Just the tip. 
I hit it with a handle, it's not going to be as strong. Okay, reinforcements have arrived. Good job. We cleared this section out pretty much. Nice. Okay, dealing with the archers before they're trying to retreat to the keep. There we go. Nice. And that should be the settlement when taken. I've taken this tire from them. Cool. A good victory. How many men do we lose? 94 dead, 38 wounded. Brave soldiers storming the battlements. Uh, yeah, and we'll show mercy. Why can't we pillage? Oh, you can't pillage settlements that are your culture. I mean, they deserve it for rebellion, rebelling, but it is what it is. Okay, a nice little victory right there. We'll also try and get some more influence by... Uh, donating prisoners. It's one influence, but it's fine. Whatever. Make sure no one takes this castle immediately. Wait for reinforcements to arrive. We also do need to rest as well. Get our fatigue fully up. God, there's a lot of sieges going off north, right? Yeah, a lot of sieges north. But I think that's just like the Byzantine campaign. Is like you start off in a very rough situation. And when you slowly claw it back bit by bit. So ideally on our next goal. Is to probably take this castle. That's going to be our next play. Of course making sure that this is nice and safe. Let's see if we get up some soldiers. I'm going to head back and probably recruit up some more myself. And we'll also petition as well. So we have green peasant, uh, green and peasant lands. So they could say we need more labor or more militia. Uh, more militia is fine. So we increase the militia here by eight, which is pretty good. I would say 86 militia is decent enough for me. Let's go to our castle now. See if there's any issues here. Our main well in the castle has run dry. We don't stand a chance in a siege. We have enough roguery to find an ancient aqueducts. Uh, we'll just have to deepen the well. Cost us a little bit of money. Probably we've increased the militia. Our next one is foreign travelers. A strange man appears before you. He claims to be a renowned warrior. Uh, yeah, sure. Gain some more militia. Again, a lot of the balancing here isn't, isn't great um, with like costs and stuff. But, you know, they'll, they'll get there and they'll fix these events. Incorporate them. Okay, we have 200 men. They're voting. I mean, I wouldn't mind this one. I feel like I deserve it. But I guess not. We'll just abstain for now. Keep our influence. And probably try and grab, like, one more block of infantry for another siege. Because, as I said, our main goal is to, like, secure these two provinces. That is goal number one. So now let's see. Can't get that guy. Yeah, a lot of these guys are already in another army. 21 influence for 124 men. Sure, come my way. They have a little member. Actually, I might head back to Constantinople. Oh, we'll definitely go save this settlement from being raided though first. Don't worry, help is on the way. Actually, surprisingly, we have a large amount of infantry. Okay, let's form up here. So we have the terrain to our advantage. Oh, we have a lot of cavalry on this flank and then a little bit of cavalry down on this flank. Infantry's doing fine. Let's form a shield wall for now. Archers come down a little bit. Their infantry is very thin. Let's go into a skein and let's charge. Because they're like in a very bad position. And just charge down the hill of them and you should be able to surround them. God damn it, I put out my sword again. But our, our biggest issue is going to be dealing with all the cavalry. Okay, we've already broken their infantry. I mean, we expected this battle to go very much in our favor. It's just all their cavalry is still remaining. Look at these cowards running from battle as well. 
Cool. Nice. There we go. So we lost only 19 men dead, 17 wounded. We'll take them. Go back to Constantinople quickly. As I said, I'm pretty sure Constantinople isn't a custom settlement. Yeah, I'm pretty sure this isn't a custom settlement. Because obviously it doesn't have the Theodosian Wall. But what I mean is like, this looks unique, right? This looks like it's unique. But maybe I've just never seen this map in Bannerlord. Like, these bridges look kind of cool. The settlement looks, that looks cool as well. With the light glaring in. Okay, let's head north. we got another... So, we've got all of our men now. Got a decent army set up. Again, we'll replenish it up to full. Okay, they're sieging us here. Hopefully, it's an army that we can deal with. Yeah, we're already fighting it. Okay, let's get here. Let's do a big old battle. So, a thousand men we have right now. Oh, my God. It's a misty battlefield. <laughs> I was not expecting that. Hold the line. Set yourselves up, boys. Cavalry, hold back. That is a misty battlefield. Oh my god, they have 125 horse archers. That's a little bit scary. I'm going to set my army up like here with the archers here in loose. Uh, and then my cavalry, I guess, is going to go help out. Yeah, my cavalry charge into that now. I'm going to aid you in this cavalry charge. The archers are already firing. Okay, they're pulling back now. Let's just bring our other small block here. Cavalry form up. Cavalry form up. Get into a skein formation as well. And charge them. Charge them. Look at them all. The hordes of hell are upon us. Got one down there. Go for a second one maybe. Oh my. I mean luckily with the sheer amount of cavalry we have. It's not that bad. And I think they pulled pull back a decent amount. Okay let's not overcommit with our cavalry. Let's let the AI again overcommit with theirs. Our main block has pushed up a little bit. But as I said, I'm very happy with these guys as being super passive. We have some. We have 22 of our extra horses just defending this right flank. I still wish that Bannerlord had a command. Look at all that cavalry. My god. There we go. I still wish Bannerlord had a command that allowed me to, like, tell my cavalry to, like, defend archers, you know? Like, I could give the order for my cavalry to just focus on defending archers. And they would just like roam around, play very defensive. If any cavalry comes in, they'll go and kill them. And um, we'll just fight them off, you know. Okay, nice, nice, nice. Couple kills there so far. Chasing down horse archers isn't the most exciting thing. Dismounting them, though, on the other hand, is. Okay, our other cavalry needs to go and help here. Other cavalry get up and charge. Okay, our cavalry's been severely weakened now. If yeah, barely got any left, right? I can see. Our line is, yeah. The main thing is our line is like nice and safe. This mist is really throwing me off. Who are we fighting? Okay, they are routing. Makes sense. Boom. Another good victory right there. 200 kills. We lost 40 men. Oh, is this a Bulgarian force? No wonder they have so many horse archers. Yeah, but I can't believe they made it all the way. I guess they are not at war with these two Byzantine factions. The rebel scum. Do you peace out with someone? Do you peace out? Do you make peace? We peaced out with Bulgaria. Okay. And Sicilia. So we're still at war with the Serbs. With Cyprus. The, the rebellion, Serbia. And obviously the Sultan of Rum. Uh, look at that as well. Saladin has mustered 16,000 soldiers. And the Crusaders are down to three. Yeah, like, I've taken these two castles right here. And that's what we set out to do, was to push back the traitors and deal with this by taking the two castles. That now safeguards our routes into Constantinople and safeguards our castle right here. Granted, it doesn't safeguard a lot of our trade routes. And it also splits our empire in two still. But we're working on that. We're working on that. So I guess we're just going to head north. And try and hold the line. So yeah, I think we've done what we wanted to do. Again, if you guys enjoyed this and you want to see me play more in the name of Jerusalem 2, let me know down below in the comments. Of course, by dropping a like, it really helps out the channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one.